Let's get on with it as we hit our big stories for uh, today. Uh, joining us, we'll be, uh, you know, conversing right before I introduce the guest uh, joining me this morning. We'll be talking about, you know, the, the hike in fuel prices, LPG also affected. We'll talk about what has been happening on the floor of parliament, how to bring some unity even in diversity on the floor of parliament. We'll be talking about that latest issue to do with the urgent question that has been filed in respect of the finance minister coming to parliament to give a briefing on what can be due to regulate or control skyrocketing uh, fuel prices. We'll also uh, be talking about government suspending the expansion of the school feeding uh, program, bringing you different dynamics. Joining us for the discussion, Dr. Dixon Adumako Kisi. He is Member of Parliament, Anya Soto. Doc. Hello. Mimo wachi yo. Mijo so. Aha. Naniyama Mutu say, how are things? Uh, I've started on a... <laughs> <laughs> how, how are things at your end? And how are things for your constituency, Anya Soutu? When was the last time you went there? I live in the constituency. Oh, you live in the constituency? Yes, right. Please. So you see daily what is happening with your constituents and all of that. What, I, is, what is the picture there? Well, um, first of all, let me commend you. Uh, in fact, I've been following you more closely now, mm. and your program is wonderful. Um, I, I like the fact that it's very fair and balanced. Mm. And I think you should continue to do that. Thank you. It's very important. Thank you. Very important. So um, I'll take the opportunity to also greet um, a few friends. Archibald Kobina, uh, Honorable MC uh, Mohammed Bashiru, and then my chairman, Albert Sam. Uh, we've been working hard, uh, doing some local politics, and uh, it's taken a lot of our time. But uh, it's all for the improvement and development of the constituency. And uh, personally, uh, many are weeping and crying because of the challenges, which is worldwide, and which has been worsened even more so by uh, actions taken by our good friend Putin. <laughs> um, you know, so 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 I I think the brunt of post-COVID issues, and uh, in addition, the uh, economic challenges worldwide, more specifically currently with the energy sector uh, increments, which right. is not, uh, let me say, peculiar to just Ghana. Right. And, and that is one <coughs> key thing that I know my good friends on the other side of governance uh, would agree to that this is not necessarily a Ghanaian conundrum. This is a worldwide issue. And for once, I would hope that they would at least admit to that unlike COVID, which seems to be almost shaped like an MPP, <laughs> you know, issue. I hope this one is so real, um, so close to all of us. And we, we also have to come to terms with the fact that uh, worldwide prices, we are not insulated. And, and as the hikes go up worldwide, we as a country, do a producer in, in small volume and quantity, uh, have been impacted. Yeah, so, so these are my, my few opening uh, remarks. And um, I'll leave the rest of the time to you as we proceed. OK, so uh, the picture in your constituency. But I wanted to find out as well. I mean, do any people come to you? I, I know what it means like to be a member of parliament. People are coming to you for practically everything. You know, I remember once a, a member of parliament told me in private that, look, it's so bad that someone wanted to put up a building and the person came to me that, oh, Honorable, help me with the foundation. <laughs> help yeah, me with blocks um, and stuff. In these biting economic times, do people come to you for the momo, for the, uh, what is it like? I mean, uh, in, 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 all, in all fairness to them, times are tough. And, and, and everybody is looking for avenues, uh, for solutions. And, and unfortunately, um, in our country, legislative members are seen as a, a bankroll of some sort, mm -hmm. and, and everybody seems to um, want to put us in the role of Jesus Christ, who changed uh, a few loaves of bread to a lot. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, as Roxon would uh, clearly state, we, we, we are unable to do magic to that quantum, but we do our very best. Right. And, and, uh, when you come with an issue, at least, you know, uh, I'll do my So you've been helping out? 
What are uh, some of the issues people come to you with? For me, um, whether fortunately or unfortunately, I have a hospital in the community. Right. So um, I'm literally now almost uh, a government hospital. Wow. And uh, do a lot of social services when it comes to the health aspect. Wow. Medication-wise, reduction of medical bills. It's killing me in the pocket. But yeah, it could uh, actually put you out of business uh, because uh, you're a private entity. Absolutely. But, you know, you can't turn people away uh, unless very necessary to refer them. But these are the realities. Those who do farming also might be giving away their plantain Right. And, and whatnot. It, it's, it's everybody and their local. But in all of it, um, I think that we need to gradually embolden and strengthen the governmental institutions so that we don't end up taking up work that's supposed to be done by like social services, work that's supposed to be done by you know, <laughs> revenue generation mm. uh, entities. And, and that is one of the problems I have. Those are the systemic failures that uh, are leading uh, to we, we, Because ordinarily, they, 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 they shouldn't be you know, coming to We shouldn't you. be the first point right. of call. Right. And, right. And, and I'd hope that at some point in time, we can both agree to some system that provides for our people that is not dependent on us. Okay. Uh, so that people would rather go to, uh, as it is, a social services office. Uh, even in the in, in the U.S., uh, they queue for these things. Yeah. Food stamps uh, and food others. Food stamps and these things. Yeah. And, and it is not the legislative man's work to be receiving people and handling that aspect. Uh, ours is to really focus on the, the rules of the game in the country. And, and I, 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 I get the picture there. And um, we're all feeling it in different, at different levels. It appears you're feeling it at a, a, a bit of a higher level because you're a member of parliament. But I want to find out from... Uh, the member of parliament for South Dine, yeah. who joins us here, Roxon Nelson Dafiamako. Mm -hmm. Wezo. My brother, Akakuyu. Good morning. Thank you for joining the conversation. Oh. Um, it's been nice. Uh, are you also Mr. Moneybags? Because it appears once they hear MPO, this one, you get money. You get money. But, but you, the way you're dressed this you morning. Know, I'm, a you know. MP. I'm, a, I'm a very rural ah. MP. So now there are segregations between yeah. the MPs. <laughs> he's an, he's <laughs> an urbanized MP. Yeah, I'm a very rural. And you don't have a hospital? I do. Oh, you do have a hospital? No, a, no, a personal hospital. Okay. Yes. Because he, he owns a no, private he's, facility. He's a, he's a medic. Right. He's a medic. Uh, he has his own... Um, private uh, practice. Uh, private practice. Yes. But, uh, by way of private clinic. Yes. You know, I also have my own small private law firm. Hey. You know, so. Okay. But I'm a rural MP. Uh, it's rural. Small. Yes. But, but what's, the, what's the picture in your constituency? Very briefly, in maybe it's, a minute. It's... Um, how have people been reacting? Uh, what do they come to? He, he's an urbanized MP, and so I think that, and because he's also ordinary resident in the constituency, his situation will be on daily basis. Mine is markedly different from that. My, when I visit every weekend, almost, mm. um, that's when the demands pour in. Right. And then also they pour in on via the phone. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are some of the, the things people come to you for? Hmm. Payment or hospital bills. Rent. Uh, rent. Helping people build their houses. So you support with cement, you support with sun. Blocks. Blocks. Hmm. So when, when a colleague told you that somebody approached him to support him to build with a foundation, it's, it's, he, he, was, he was telling you no lie. Ha, 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 and ha, and ha. Let, me, let, me, let me proceed. We, we pay school fees, we pay maintenance of students. Married. When, you, when you pay school fees, that's on the end. When the person is in school, we maintain them. They tell you they can't survive over the weekend. They need 200. Even teachers, salaries are still delayed. Teachers have been testing for support. Nurses do the same. We support when there are marriages. We support when there are, when there are child marriages. <laughs> yes, we support when there are funerals. And some of I the- I guess outdoor rings as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it, we support chiefs. The traditional councils, they ask for support. Sometimes they are supposed to travel to a meeting. You have to support them by way of transportation, by way of feeding. Let, 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 let me very quickly find out. How do you guys survive all of this? Because your pockets when your salary are deep, comes, but maybe not no, that deep. No, our pockets are not you, deep. You have your common fund. No, no I'm, I'm, I'm saying that maybe okay. you may have yeah. slightly deeper pockets than yes. the ordinary average Ghanaian. Okay. 
but there's a limit to the depth of your pockets. So okay. everything Obviously. goes. Everything goes. So where, how do you manage? Where your salary comes in goods. I, I it, want to write a book on yes. who helps the MP. Yes, your salary <laughs> goes. Ask, ask him. It's the first time, I'm a second time, but his salary doesn't stay in his pocket. It doesn't stay in mine. It goes. It's gone before. It in arrived. fact, sometimes there are expenditures marked against it. My salary is yet to come. I think yours too is yet to come. Yeah. But there are demands. So you assure the people that, don't worry, you, you are aware that salaries have delayed. And then when they come, I'll sort you out. So by the time the salary can, so I've been fighting with my wife. Your, yes. your, your salaries, do they usually delay this long? Hmm. Well, ask you see, ask you see and his government. There's a schedule for paying public service. No, no, it's, it's a question <laughs> I'm putting to you. So you should have been paid by now? Yes, which we ought to have been paid. Do you, by do you now. know why it has delayed? Ask you see and his government. <laughs> I mean, Times it's, are it's, tough. No, 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 no. But no. I want to realize that. Uh -huh. But the serious <laughs> issues are that there are demands on MPs. And there are also misconceptions. People think that we get free fuel. Somebody told me just last week, he was horrified to hear that we buy our own fuel. Hmm. People think that we are fed every day in Parliament. We buy our own food. <laughs> Ask him the number of that we bought kinky and, kinky and, and fish to eat. So we are not fed every day like others think. We are not hmm. giving free fuel every day like others think. We buy hmm. our own fuel. Hmm. So the prices are biting all of us, mm -hmm. I, I, you know. So I can't put this, these are the realities on the ground. Mm. And our people, and, and you see, I come from a stronghold in terms of party support. Right. So you can't really take anybody out. Mm -hmm. Even if the person is glaringly MPP, he comes to you let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let me pose a quick question to you, mm -hmm. uh, Doc. Mm -hmm. How do you think we can structure our system mm -hmm. so that we avoid some of these things. Because like it or not, these kinds of activities breed corruption. Correct. True or false? It does. And, and, because and if, if they keep putting pressure on you and you know that I'm a member of parliament, I want to retain my seat, or even if I'm not going to contest, I want to make it possible for someone from my fraternity to mm -hmm. take over. So I must do certain things. Correct. You have to pay. And if you don't, they will remove you. Yeah, so, so I, I really think that what we ought to do as a nation, we, we should strengthen our social services and then have a direct linkage with the legislative arm uh, so that we can direct people there instead of to our offices. And, and, and I really think that when the social services is improved and, and, and things are moving appropriately, mm. uh, then whoever comes as an MP will gradually uh, be de depending on the social services that's working. And, and, and I really think that uh, the, the, the American way would help us. Right. So that gradually we can move the people from going to the- Detach them. Absolutely, because, uh, mm. and, and it has to be a, you know, an effort from both sides. Mm. Because you know, whether in MPP times or NDC times, uh, the social services have to be uh, appropriately uh, given to all Ghanaians mm. and not necessarily swayed to. Sometimes uh, it appears that some of the benefits swing to one party line or another, depending on who's in government. Mm. And, and once we can also address that, because uh, you know, there was this claim that outboard voters that came went to a particular sect. And, and you know, these things are sometimes, we, 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 we cause these injuries to ourselves right. as, as politicians. Uh, when there's, uh, for instance, uh, last year, or was it last two years? Yeah, last year, when the Mumu alerts were coming, folks were complaining that MP people were not getting it and that the NDC folks were rather getting it. You know, I mean, these kind of, uh, whilst there was no, I mean, I don't think the numbers tell if you're NDC or MPP, the phone numbers, because the, well, these the, the, the be monies went, it went all out to everybody. And, and some of us uh, even think that the MPP should have skewed it to their strongholds and won more seats. Mm. I mean, these are some of the right. uh, intricate uh, you know, things that happen. But more and more, I think we're becoming really bogged down and overwhelmed. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, you go to a funeral, make a donation of, let's say, maybe 200. Mm -hmm. But before you leave there, you spend like <laughs> you've given out way uh, more than. No, you spend like way more than. I mean, you know, is, is there any point it's, where, it's I mean, crazy, yeah? th this was not table for discussion, but these are some of the realities that, yeah. that, that you face. Yeah. Uh, are there any times where you feel 
you, you have any regrets becoming a member of parliament when some of these things happen? Are there any times when you feel overwhelmed and, and you wish you hadn't even made this step? I, I rather wish I could do more because mm. people really need the help. Mm. And, and that is one key thing. They, they, they really need the help and you sort of become their messiah. And, 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 and I wish I could do more. If I had more, I could do more. And that's... But that's, the reality is that you don't. That I don't. Right. Yeah. Uh, now, for he, you. So he, quickly he, on, on, on yes, that. He made some very fantastic points. And if, for instance, about the Abo Moto. Right. If I have just been given the opportunity to procure some for my constituents. Okay. Your station came to cover it on Monday. Mm. I'm giving out 100 Abo Motos right. to my Fisher folks. How did you fund that? Um, I'm funding it from my common fund. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a government subsidy project, and it's, it's, been, it's been run through Ministry of Fisheries for some time. Mm. Now, CODA, which is the Coastal Development. Yes. So, uh, good morning, my brother, Jerry, Jerry Shaib, CEO of CODA. Mm. Fantastic guy. He's been supportive. Right. So, I've, I've given now 60, uh, 40 more to give. Mm. And I also intend to give up some sewing machines to the young adolescents to put them to some trade. Mm. But the point he made, which I want to assent to it, is that government itself, by its own deliberate policy, makes social interventions. And there are plethora of them. So I think we've gotten to a stage where some, some portions of that social intervention should be rolled, rolled out through the MPs. Mm. We are the direct representative of the people. And we have a stake. And so if, if your office is supposed to roll out such a facility and you do not, you'll be kicked out. He, he made a point during the NBSSI um, f facilities for the COVID relief. The, the NDC is also complaining that a lot of the beneficiaries disproportionately came from the MPP. So it's interesting to hear him that its own party people are also alleging that a lot of NDC people got it. So what could we have done in that 275 members of parliament? 20% of that could be ruled out through them. So that's a direct link to the people. Then the government itself could roll out the 80%. That's the way the common fund formula works. The common fund is supposed to go to the assembly. But by some loan design and policy, a small fraction comes to the MP where he has a direct influence. And you are accountable to the people for it. So we can design such for, and, and, and look, it's done in Kenya, it's done in Tanzania, it's done in Botswana. MPs are supported. Mm. It's done in Nigeria. Nigeria, there's an improvement in their emoluments and the kind of social interventions they can So basically, you think MPs can be given more so exactly. that they can also assist you, you more? You asked him whether he regretted. He said no. He wished he could do more. So, the, so the, question, the question I'm yes. asking, though, you feel, for example, your common fund, the, yes. you could be given more. Exactly. How much do you get currently? Because we, so many we, figures we, have been we, put we, out. We here. get about 70,000 a quarter. Every quarter you get about 70,000 yes. Ghana cities. And, and you want more. And, so, so let's say if you had, how much would, would, would be sufficient? I mean, to listen, you? If, if you're dealing with... Uh, and it depends on the revenue. So once the revenues are dwindling, yeah. sometimes you get 50,000, 48,000. Because I've heard 50,000 before. Yeah. Yes. If, yes. If you're handling 50 students mm. and each one is getting 1,000 CVs. That's 50K. That, it's gone. And so, so how much? How much do you feel so, would be for, adequate? For instance, I, I just helped twenty students, so twenty k gone. Mm. And uh, the tertiary uh, fees have. Uh, let, let me just get this. Yeah. How, how much you do know, you feel would be adequate? Uh, if you were given a hundred thousand, hundred and fifty, would that help? There's another bigger issue, and I think I can express it here. Uh, not all constituencies are alike. Yes. I have over three hundred thousand in population. He has about 60 or I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I have about 60 and about 30, 35,000 voter population. You see? Wow. He has so, about 300,000, maybe and about 30,000 one, or 40 40 voter, population. voter population. So when you give him the same cake as I, then you are depriving him. And that is one so, of the... So even in that, that is one you're of suggesting the, here that if we could even align the common fund based on constituency size and population, it, it would be a good thing. Do you agree? It's, it's yes, very I agree important. because you see, the common fund to the assemblies is also disproportionately aligned because the municipalities get more than the district assemblies mm. and the metros get more than the municipalities. Wow. So a similar formula could be designed for MPs whose, whose 
constituency size and mm. population the, density. The Dome Quabenyas, the Quabre East. I mean, you look at Bantama. Yeah, exactly. You want yeah. to compare so, that exactly. with Sege and I asked for something. Look, I mean, so yeah. when we are crying and Jifa Goma, she's kept to South. She, she doesn't, she, she's simply overwhelmed. Yeah. Because South, now, if I'm crying, I have a voter population of about 35,000 and I'm crying. Then she asks me, what should she do? Yeah. So, so I it's, think that is one of the issues that I always talk about, mm -hmm. that uh, not all constituents are alike. If he gets 10 kilometers of road and I get 10 kilometers of road, you're not being fair to Ajahn Sotong in the sense that my size is bigger. My one electoral area is probably his constituency. Okay. So, 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 but conversely, so, 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 physically, so, so, the physically, some constituencies yes, may be... the size of, of, of population the, of the, density yeah. smaller, but physically, why? But why? mine is both. Yeah. Which means that even moving around, yes. it, it would also Adaku, involve more... Adaku may seem small in terms of population, population density. Right. But, but geographically, it's huge. Let, 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 you know, I, I want us to look into the, yeah. the other issues, yeah. but I just wanted a quick take on this. Mm -hmm. So disparities, differences in your constituencies. But you, for example, do you feel if you had X amount, it would have been better than what you're getting? So you're expecting about 70K. Yeah. Would maybe a 150K have worked better for you or a oh, 200K? Uh, I mean, uh, let's be realistic so absolutely. that we know where we should have. So I, I, what, what, where you sit, yeah. which figure would you have said, this would help me better? 250,000. For a quarter. 250,000 Ghana. Absolutely. Fanyasu For a quarter, yes. Because that would be better in terms of Absolutely. dealing with some of these issues. It, and you way. wouldn't get out of pocket. That, you know, but at least it would be better than be what better, is now. Much better. How about you? Yes, I think, I think between 250 to 300. Because, 250 to 300,000. Because that could... If it, and, 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 and there's also a formula for, for, for spending the money. Right. There's a portion that's supposed to go to education. Hmm. There's a portion to health a portion to social intervention, a portion to infrastructure, and a portion for uh, goods and services. Right. So you don't have the money, you, don't, you are not at liberty to spend it on one item. That's also the difficulty. You must satisfy the, the all, statutory all the different requirements. Categories. So there's a small amount that goes to education, a proportion that will go to health. Well, you can't abandon all Interesting. These, these are some dynamics that I guess most people are not aware of, and, and it's very interesting that we've uh, put them out here today. But thank you so much for, for the education. And of course, so 200, 250, 250, 250 to 300. And of course, that would also mean more money in our kitty. If we had more, we'd be able to do and, more and, for them. And they should appreciate the fact that we need appropriate records. So not all activities will be covered by a common fund. I mean, it has to be receipted. Right. And, and, and sometimes it's a challenge when you're talking with people or you're dealing with people and you're like, Chai, this, this thing you want me to help you with, I can't use a common one mm. for. It and and that, that is... Th those are challenges. Yeah. And, and, let's, and, let's quickly, and, and, let's quickly I let, let me add this. It may not necessarily mean more revenue. For instance, government undertook what they call IPEP about mm. two years ago. IPEP. Right, right. And that some of the IPEP, lots of them have run into problems in terms of completion. If they had channeled that through the MPs, I think there would have been a better result. Mm. So it's all about policy alignment. Policy alignment. You know, because funding has been made available in the budget, but implementation ran into problems. Mm. If I were MP and I'm in charge of two of those IPEP projects, <laughs> I have an interest. Because if I don't, I don't complete it for Ajebi mm -hmm. or Germany or, or Jakiti or Tukwalime or Ahon or Kaira or Chate, I'll lose votes there. Mm. But because you leave it in the hands of um, a public servant who is so detached from the people, who, who as a supervisor doesn't even speak the language of the people. So are you speaking of the detached. infrastructure for poverty I, eradication? I, I, exactly. That could have been ruled out through the MPs. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's get to some of the core issues uh, we've tabled for today. And, and the minority, of course, is hauling the finance minister uh, before <laughs> parliament. Yesterday, it was interesting because we had the Bungo MP, Edward Bauer, right here. And I put it to him. In fact, he, was, he, he joined us uh, via phone. And I put it to him that, look, so what are you going to do about it? What are the steps Parliament can take on this matter? And he said, I'm going to file an urgent question. And he, he actually sent me you know, a copy of what he had put out there, summoning you know, or calling for the Minister for Finance uh, to find out what he is doing to slow down the increments of petroleum products uh, prices at the pumps. And, and that was filed yesterday. Looking at where we find ourselves currently in terms of 
you know, the fuel pricing. Now LPG is up, fuel is up. Uh, Dr. Nixon, uh, for the eight year, in fact, the projections by Duncan Amwa and others are that we'll be hitting nine very soon. And if you look at the fact that yesterday we're looking at $111 per barrel, and today we are looking at 116 for Brent, mm -hmm. it's, it's just getting worse mm -hmm. by the day. Our taxes are slapped on, the percentages are in there, the OMCs cannot do anything in terms of because when you look at producing, you know, the chain of producing and then making your, uh, what do they even call them? Not the revenue, your, there's this word that escapes me, but they must also make their margins. Uh, markups. <clears throat> markups. You get it. So it, it, I, I really don't know. The, contemplating this problem, it's a big issue for me sitting here because yeah. Charlie, it, it, it's as though, Charlie, check, like every time I go to the fuel pump, mm. hey, Actually, go on. Something has changed, yeah. and I can't even put the sort of gallons I was putting in my car previously. Yeah. I have to limit. Everyone is uh, Dixon. Uh, your, yeah. your your take your take on that. So so um, it is as real as you stated. Prices are high, and 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 I think that and and I've been misunderstood on many quarters. I really think that in times like this, we need to readjust our mode of operation and and i really if i was a director of many companies maybe i would reduce the working days for my staff members uh, so that they can work four days instead of five and at least cut down on that extra uh, you know day uh, so so i i really think that and then even our visitations <laughs> has to be very carefully looked at and 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 then we need to also consider carpooling or as it is uh, if there are two employees at Joy who live in my constituency, they should find a way of joining. Uh, so maybe you can do three days of driving, mm. and then I'll also do the next three days. Right. Uh, these, I, I, I'm not here to say that it's right that the prices are going high, but I'm just saying that, uh, folks, this is the situation we're in. We need to adjust to the situation to save some money mm. and, and to be able to live on our ever-staying same salaries, if you understand what I'm saying, because right. once a year takes off, if you are getting 10K, it's 10K across, but the prices are going up, so we need to adjust. And I really think that uh, Russia has worsened the scenario, mm. and, and it's, it's very crucial that we get that in our heads, that uh, if it was going to be better, just the stakes within Russia and Ukraine has worsened the global uh, supply chain. Right. Uh, the, I mean, we uh, produce the, oil, but only to a limited absolutely. extent. So it absolutely. means we still have to, and, and when you put in, you know, the matter to do with toll, then it makes everything even more complicated. And mind you, Meaning producers we don't import. determine the price. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, you don't, <laughs> you know, you don't determine the price. You know, OPEC does. And, and OPEC, uh, as, a, as a conglomerate on its own, uh, you know, lives in a whole different world. Mm. And, 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 and that is, one of the key things we have to come to terms with, uh, that uh, we, we, we consume more than we produce. That is one thing. And, 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 and these are hard times, not so surprising after a pandemic. Or even, I mean, I'm waiting for the pandemic to be called off. But right. literally, post-pandemic recoveries are not uh, uh, isolated from some of these things. These were expectations that the world you know, had in mind. Uh, once the, the disease had taken over for, for a while, as part of the rebound, demands for oil would increase, first of all, and then prices would go up. So these are sort of, I wouldn't say normal trends, but expected trends. But unfortunately, with the crisis in Ukraine, it's just, if it was going to be uh, 10 percentage points up, now it's 20 because of... What, what is your expected trend? So we've been told that... Uh, we'll be hitting nine CDs mm -hmm. per liter before the end of month or by end of month. Some have said, it, you know, the, the, the global price would hit $120. Um, and, and we're already inching there, 116 today and, and all of that. What, what are your projections, I mean, in this month of March? Um, I, I would hesitate to make a projection. Uh, just because I don't have the numbers with me, and, and, and I, I, I'm very professional when it comes to... But, but do you suspect, price. from the trend you're seeing, that things are going to continue ticking up? If we don't do some subsidies, 
or if we don't get some subsidies. Are subsidies the way to go? Because that has uh, also been spoken of. Um, Only yesterday I, I heard talk of that, yeah. that we subsidize. But the, the caution there is that if government subsidizes, you will, as the ordinary citizen, mm -hmm. at some point you will have to pay back, maybe through your nose. Well, um, what, what's quite obvious is that either way we, 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 we get to pay. Because once inflation uh, is increased, then we feel it as well. So uh, either way, we are screwed. I mean, that's in simple terms, <laughs> you know. But, but, but like I said, <laughs> lifestyle modifications is, what, is the way to go. Mm. And, and, and we all need to readjust in the short term, until we figure out where we're really going, because uh, they're calling their annoying. Annoying. I mean, annoying in, in, in local parlance, annoying. And, and I'm feeling it, he's feeling it, and we're all being cautious. Um, and, and the other recommendation I made that people didn't appreciate was the fact that um, your SUV, sports utility vehicles, or the V8s, uh, your, your monthly consumption can be reduced if you just tip down to your La Paz, Toyotas, you know, Corollas and things like that, which then would help us. Uh, I, I'm really considering a much smaller car uh, for my trips to Parliament so that I can save some, some, some money. Mm. Uh, uh, so these are lifestyle modifications that we all need to do. If I'm doing long journeys, then I ride with the... Obese, obese, how many liters I got? So, I mean, that, that, that would be a good adjustment. So you are contemplating that Absolutely. to cut down on your fuel costs. Absolutely. Uh, so so be, before we get to the substantive matter of, um, you know, that urgent question, because we're we are talking about the surrounding issues, the, the fuel price increments, and the increments across the board, basically, transport fares and everything. How, what is your quick reaction to that so we get to the urgent question as well? I, I heard them link that to the Ukrainian crisis. Mm. And fair, I, right? No. Not fair? No. Why not? Look, fuel prices... Before, before the Ukrainian oh, crisis. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Before, before let, me, let me just set the premise. Yes, there were challenges. I mean, from April 2021... Can I make the... When it hit, hit 6.90, yeah. from April 2021, we have seen adjustments and all of that within this... Uh, these first few months alone, 30%. Yes, we know. But you cannot take away the fact that we have been operating not $62, but anywhere between $75 and $90 something. Now we've shot $100. We're at $100 and $511, $116. You, you, you have to appreciate that. No, can I make the point? Okay. Under this government, between 2020 to 2021, Fuel prices were increased about 18 times. NDC released a press statement on this matter and bemoaned that scenario. Hmm. And bemoaned that scenario. Between January and last week, when the Ukrainian crisis hit, hmm. fuel prices had gone up about seven times. Between January, however slight it was, there was a change. And so some persons, it, jokes were shared on social media and it was like a disco light. Every time you get to the pump, there's a change in the figure, upwards. <laughs> it was a big joke. Right. Then, of course, the Ukrainian crisis hit. Mm -hmm. The government has always been telling us that they don't control PRC. Mm. They don't. They don't control the, the fuel prices. And so the adjustments will come when it has to come. So, so the point is that as a country, we've not been able to manage. It appears that the pricing in fuel is linked to the, the status Russia of is our a of, huge oh, producer. Let me make this point. Okay. Look, there is a direct correlation between the status of our city to the dollar, to the fuel price. Oh. Check it. Okay, so I'll, no, I'll, no. I'll, I'll, I'll give no, you that because no. the exchange rate is one of the factors it, it in is, terms but, of... But, but, so you, you no, purchase with hard currency, no, you can't dollars ignore, and, no, and all of yeah, that. You can't but, ignore... But you also can't... But Russia, you also can't... Just, 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 only just, hold it. Right. That, that's what I've been No, saying. but you already... That's have, exactly the point no, he is. but he hasn't... Already this government hasn't done well with the fuel prices. Oh. 
So explain, the, explain it for us. Uh, how, yes. What exactly is it? Because the taxes that were slapped on, yes. I mean, a lot of them came from your end, your administration. Amen. Why? Yes, a lot of them came. They I came mean, to reverse They were carried they on, reverse though, all. though you came through with deregulation. They, they, they came to reverse all. They came to reverse all. Not all of them. I really not all use new ones. So as for taxation, they decided to, to, to repeal a lot of our tax laws. Which because they labeled them, no, they labeled them nuisance, nuisance taxes, taxes right? which became a reduction in our tax burden. Which tax burden? And yeah, then you introduced twice the normal so, so, taxes. So, so, so Roxanne, the point you know, is so what? The point, the point is, is that mm -hmm. this government should be held liable. For Russia? No, not for Russia. Russia just occurred last week. Do you know, do you Russia know that, is a latter day occurrence. No, do you know that so even a threat? We of have war, been crying about your about your can in, in, increase prices. Of course, I agree. So, so and when was of, the how was much were you charging country? when when crude was selling at forty? How no, much no, no, were you when, charging? Oh, crude yes. at forty. Yes. Why who did it sell at forty in your time? I don't have the exact price. I, <laughs> I, I have, have the yet. figures. Crude sold at forty mm -hmm. in your time. Mm -hmm. you, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't reduce the prices. Oh. You, you I mean, understand? That, so, that, so, like, so it is factors. no. So the cry of the people mm -hmm. is that when when crude prices dropped, mm -hmm. government ought to reduce fuel prices. But you don't see the drastic reduction. Now you want us to retighten uh, our uh, belt uh, not because. When prices do change, you, yes. uh, no, no, but but uh, apart oh, from instances you know, where there have be been marginal, sometimes you, know, you see a zero, real zero one. interventions so, yes. in terms of, and, and it's been it's very marginal. Some eight passwords or yeah. something, and, but we are talking. It doesn't even hit look, eight passwords. When you look at it, when, when you look lot. at the recent difference that yeah. I I saw, the most recent one, mm -hmm. seven point three three to eight point one six. That is eighty three passwords, yes. almost one six. That's huge. That's huge. I mean, when when there but, are any marginal passwords, but we don't know why. But I think he shouldn't discount the Russian. Right. I'm not discounting. I'm saying you said, Russia so is you're a blaming, latter, you're blaming this Russia is a latter day occurrence. Russia mm. is less than a week. Why should we no. blame? Why Russia should we blame? Less than uh, a doc, doc, hold on. Hold, less on. Than hold on. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's not have too yes. much of a banter. Yeah, yeah. Why should we blame the NPP for where we sit now in terms of oil pricing? You've mentioned the exchange rate. Yes. What else? The exchange rates, and then the fact that they have destroyed all. Oh. As, yes, you My have opinion. destroyed or toll is no longer is no longer um <coughs> that 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 is yeah, um processing. Sorry, sorry. Let him sorry. you understand. Sorry. We had toll. We and, still have toll. Yes, but what's the status of toll? Mm. We still have toll. Toll is is actually and a very good restructured, and I'm very happy. How long? How long do you restructure uh, toll? Oh, How long I mean, must it take? I mean, if you want to go to tour and its problems, it, those problems it? didn't start just with the MPP. Tor, but, but, no, but again, no, but again, and the no, no, tour was hold refining. On, hold on, hold on. But again, the, was the, the problem would be that I would also look at you and say, how long will it take you to deal with the mess of tour? Because you see now, because we are ill prepared, because tour is not doing what it is meant to be, we are suffering even more shocks. Tour before from the Russian tour before they took invasion. over was refining crude mm. and was helping. So, so, so one, what's what your exchange rate to yes. deal with the tall situation? Yes, because if we had a refinery operating, mm. then we could be processing some of our crude. Okay. Now, so but, with, with, but with this, that with this, with this, the price. Right. Yes, but but, 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 but it will but, impact. But it, it will, will impact affect the cost because the listen, cost, the final like Duncan Amwa mentioned here yeah. yesterday, mm. if you are processing in your country, yeah, correct, and dispatching the, across, transport. it's far different from. Yeah. Importing from another country, Logistic. the different logistical cost, and bringing it into your country, now spreading across. I mean, that, that is that a different even, ballgame. that uh, even improves your also. exchange rate. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. That, you that know much. that. But, but how do you feel about the minority then tabling this urgent question? Uh, the Bongo MP, he told me, he went ahead. If I may, and, if I may and, touch on and, that. If I may touch on that. No, I, I, I want, I want his reaction. Already. I, I want his reaction no, but uh, to lawyer. that. I, do, do you feel it is, uh, it's over the top? Calling the finance minister you know, One, before parliament to answer these questions. You know, I've, I've always been wondering uh, why certain things almost suddenly appear urgent. And, and I, I love it when the speaker says, that, listen, it might appear urgent to you as a member of parliament, mm. but in their purview, uh, in the assessment of the world and everything else, it might not necessarily be urgent. Don't you see the urgency and, of and, the situation and, when and, it comes to fuel prices and how once fuel goes up, it affects everything. Don't you see the urgency in that and, no. and for some remedial measures to speedily be brought to bear? I think that 
fuel price increases are a huge problem. I admit to that. Now, the key thing is that we ought to know what we can do something about, and we ought to know what we can't do anything about. And, and, and as I've s stated many times, the prices are not set by us as a nation. It's a worldwide conglomerate that sets the prices. Uh, what we can do in the interim, uh, maybe, is to bring relief in some of the tax uh, bits that we impose as a nation. But then again, we'll suffer on our developmental end as well. So, so it's, it's a very tough situation we're in. Uh, we already have a budget that is out mm. and under in the sense that the revenues that the finance minister had projected for even this year is short by six billion or even more than the six billion, mm. I mean, per how things are going. So, so I, I appreciate the challenges that the finance minister has at the moment. And, and it's important that we, we, we table these things out and be, be realistic in our expectations. Is it a right to haul him before parliament? I mean, well, he well, has to come and answer, I, right? I, I think that um, maybe it's a bit too pre premature. Uh, because of all these increments, 30% no, 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 within no, no. What, just what, this period in the, the year, reason why following I think, from last year, following from transport fare hikes, you think it's premature? The reason why I think it's premature is the fact that you know, we're not even at the peak of all of this, in all fairness. Uh, we don't know in two weeks' time where Russia's... But, but people are not... You see, the, the point is we may not be at the peak, but people are feeling the peak in their pockets. Well, <laughs> well Realistic. Well, I, I think that, in all honesty, we all read the news. There are business outlets that are turning out data, information about how world prices are increasing. And all. We all read these things. Mm. No business director or business guru in this country is not making adjustments and necessarily waiting for what finance minister will say. I mean, I mean let me just state it categorically that private enterprise uh, doesn't, uh, you know, factor all their decisions strictly on government. Mm. You know, you, it, they take risk and they do things in a very different way. And that's why they are private enterprise. And, and as, as it stands right now, um, some of the businessmen I've, I've talked to are, are looking to other ways and means of you know, restructuring their business. Uh, if you go to the likes of uh, Casa Perco, uh, you know, where they use still a lot of energy in terms of their production, right. uh, you know, they have to take decisions not waiting for government. If not, I mean, the losses will come and they'll see it glaringly in the second quarter. So, so these are shareholder, business owner decisions that uh, will listen to the finance minister, but will pay more attention to the current scenario and how Russia impacts the Kasaperko that we drink in this country. Mm. And, and these are the associations that it, it pains me that the Dafia Makors and the Roxins of the, this country are failing to recognize the fact that, hey, Russia is real and as real as COVID was. And, look, and, look, look, and, let, and let, let's, need, let's also be real here. And we need not discount if, it. If, if, and I, I do appreciate the fact that, I mean, your, your term in Parliament has not been that lengthy. But if you had been in Parliament mm -hmm. during their time, and there have been times like that where fuel prices have escalated, been rising and all of that, are you telling me your side would not have done same? Well, I, like I said, we would, but it's premature. Okay, let me come to you quickly on, Yet, on, on uh, this point. What is, what is um, disappointing is for the Dr. Kisis to refuse to accept responsibility for their um, non-performance in handling the economic affairs of this country. Because you can't, there's no way you can link the poor performance of this government to Russia. In fact, there have been so much attempt to link it even to COVID. Now, suddenly, they are rushing away from COVID to Russia. But that's by the by. Look, <laughs> the finance minister declared in this country that he was going to do a 20% cut in expenditure mm -hmm. by way of... Um, relief. Um, relief. No, no relief. By so way budget of responding. cuts. Responding. Budget to, cuts, yes, right? To, to ha, does the parliament, time. since you brought it up, does no. parliament have the details of that? Yeah, have no, the details exactly. Of that? So I filed a question. Mm. Director, I attempt to come and tell parliament what are the details 
the, the details of that 20% cut. Now, already there's, there's a funding gap of 36 billion in the 2022 budget. Right. He has a revenue projection of 100 billion, an expenditure projection of 136 billion. That was the appropriation we passed. Mm -hmm. All right. So even if E levy is not happening, that's another gap of let's say seven billion. Right. That takes the funding gap to 41 42, billion. 43 billion. Else. Right. This government, when they took over, the expenditure of government before they took over was our 45 billion under President Mahama. But the, the times have changed. Hold on. With the revenue, revenue projection of about 38 to 37. Revenue collection has improved to about 60 billion now. The last I recall is 50 something, but they are doing pretty well. well. Let's they, say they about overshot, 60 billion. They overshot the overshot. Yeah, so the let's say 60 GRA's billion. Estimations, right. Why couldn't the government stay within its means? Why do we necessarily have to move expenditure lines from 45 billion to 136 billion in, in five years? All right, all right. So, government can simply bring succor and comfort to itself, its own operations, mm. if it reduces the expenditure lines. For instance, in the 2022 budget, government intends to recruit 500 presidential staffers for 2022. That's not why, the why would the government want to do that in this country? That's not the case. It is. Why? It's in the budget. So, how, how do you uh, say that it's not so, the case? So, so I, I, and I was going to it's ask... It's in the budget. So Where exactly you're getting the figures from? So you're relying on what has been... It's in the budget. Uh, me, because this, me, this has been mentioned me, no, on this show before. Yes, so it's I in the budget. Can I educate him a little bit? No, so, hold on. No, hold, hold, I don't need the... Let, let me no, hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You need the help. I just want you to chip in on this matter very quickly. No, let me make my point. Let me just cite one No, let me make my point. Are you aware? Are you aware? Let me make my point. It is okay. Just note it down Come if a government is a presidency decide mm. to bring all other important state institutions under its ages, that's not my business. Mm. If you decide to bring, for instance, the school feeding program, which was under the Ministry of Gender, mm. and because of some disagreement, you say it should come under the office of the president. That is the office of the president. If you decide to make the scholarship secretariat an agency under the office of the president, that's your business. Mm. If you decide to make so a you, whole, know the, you know the right thing. Yes, but you are saying presidential staffers. You are you are not labeling them as public servants. You are called you have labeled them as presidential staffers. So, so their problem is how they are addressing them. Thank you. That's the problem. So if you are recruiting presidential staffers, you are tomatoes, not tomatoes. No, you are not recruiting staff for NI. You are not recruiting staff for scholarship secretariat. So don't confuse the argument. Mm. You have labeled them as presidential staffers. Mm. And presidential staffers don't work at the office of the national ID. Hmm. No scholarship. So, so, so how does this whole bit of uh, you government, know, for instance, calling, to ha hauling, hauling the finance minister to to come explain to, to tell us parliament? I mean, we've been, we've been told, for example, that in reality, no, your, me, your, your, me, own, your own colleague on the floor of parliament, Akaku, on your me, side of parliament. Let me make the point. Then, then would we'll, we'll, then so very quickly on that because I want to government this government in these crunch times mm -hmm. has increased fees and charges by between fifteen to thirty percent. Mm. Fees and charges. Mm. Every government and, service. And it has become so appropriate considering. Why? Why cost. has it become so appropriate? Considering the cost of Why has business. it become so appropriate? Even now. Look, look you, you accept the fact that we are in crunch times. And yet you are saying that when I'm going to buy. Uh, operational when I'm expenses. Going to apply, when I'm going to apply. How do you attend to operational expenses? So my my question, my question still, it still stands. How does this solve the problem? Because. We've been told you 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 Which problem? you hold the purse strings when it comes to yes. some level of controlling what the yes. executive yes. does, but when it comes to fuel prices yes. and the components yes. and and what else the, the the ripple effects are, it is managed by the executive. Yes, you don't manage that. Yes, and no matter what, you can't control that. So is this not a, a futile you know attempt? You haul the finance minister, he will tell you. We, for X reason, the same things we are talking about, exchange rate, uh, prices on the global market, what does this achieve, really? But at, least, but at least it's an opportunity for the people to hear exactly the interventions that it, the government has to offer. Next time, call the energy minister. No, 
Why? The finance minister? No, no. Well, well, well it, it was mentioned, just, just, just so you know, the um, components yes. that go into yes. and particularly, know, pure pricing. Yes. It has been mentioned that two out of three are under the finance ministry. Yes. And so, so he should come and answer. So that, that's just So, and these are many other things. Look, you've, 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 you've lifted the bench, the 50% benchmark, benchmarks on import duties. Mm. That, is, that, is, that is a source of, 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 it's under of some, but, but there's, there's no, a new dynamic no, in the no, no. of that. You're, you're aware of you it. See, when they say it's a new dynamic, it's a, it's a mere declaration of intention. Mm. They haven't carried it out. Right. So that's another... Because in Japan, your colleague Thank has been you. talking about that. Thank you. So this government in 2022 is, is practically squeezing us dry. Mm. And they want to top this with E-Levy. It won't happen. Uh, the E-Levy won't happen? It won't happen. It won't happen. Uh, Professor Tukuba has been saying that it may be terrible and all of that, but we need, in fact, where we find ourselves, we need the E-Levy. You're saying it won't happen? I, I, are you against we the have, progress, we have, we economic 20, progress of Ghana? We have 20, Is the NDC oh, against the economic progress of Ghana? Because if e -levy, if, if even e -levy, people, no, if even no, people no, who have no, worked that's with a very wicked, your administration that's a very wicked, in the past that's a very wicked, are saying that that's a very it's terrible, wicked, but we wasted, need it. That's a very wicked Why is it wicked? We have 24 tax handles, 24, mm -hmm. 24. Mm -hmm. And this, at the end of the year, last year, gave us in excess of 60 billion Ghana cities, minus all borrowings, minus donations, minus other sources of revenue that we get. Mm. What has government done to reduce its own expenditure? Government, well, government for instance, have, is buying I mean, 100 buses for MMT, Metro yeah. Mars. Do we need hundred buses for Metro Max? Uh, mm. Let me let me take what? a quick look. Let me take a quick look at this uh, comment that comes in. It, it's interesting. Raymond Abiu says on Facebook, he's watching live. He says one thing is conspicuously uh, missing in our conversation as a country, uh, which is the call for the resignation of Ken Oforiata. Ken is directly responsible for Ghana's financial woes and should be forced to account for the borrowing he's engaged in since becoming mm. finance minister. And he he goes on to talk about other things. Uh, do you subscribe to this, where people say that he's not managed the economy properly, I think so. and even in terms of petroleum prices? I so think so. I, you think not, he should go? The Honorable Isaac Adongo has been speaking. Mm. He's been saying mm. that Ken's own firm and that of the Minister of State at the Office of the Minister of Finance have turned themselves into book runners, and every borrowing that we do, the NFE. Mm. And I think that's very, very important. You have to prove that. No, he has the evidence. The man no. says he has the evidence. No. He's done his checks. No. Uh, look, did you listen to them when they were vetted? They admitted to that. No. They admitted to that. So why? Yeah. why so, so, so basically, and, and on, two, on the back of what? No, no, and you two, and two, and and two. Mm -hmm. in five years, Ken has borrowed in excess of 230 oh billion God. Ghana cities. Uh-huh. In five years. Yes. All right? Uh -huh. Now, has he been able to account for all these monies? Some of the monies, he claims that in 2021, we paid in excess of 31 billion in interest payments in servicing the loans alone. What, 31 you, billion. what are you doing under your leadership? Please, 31 billion. Ask him how much of those facilities were procured under their, their regime and what has it been applied to? And I'll, and I'll give you another scenario. Mm -hmm. We made some borrowings. Time is running on those. Some of them, the moratorium has even elapsed. Mm. So we are beginning to service them. Yet we have not put those loans to the purpose for which we borrowed them. I'll give you one. Keta C defense. We borrowed, we borrowed some money to do the Tema three-lane three road project. Mm. If that project was supposed to have been completed in 18 months, we are in 2022. Nothing has happened. We borrowed 256 million euros to do the Shaman or Tema to the Domi Bridge dual carriage, multi-nodal multi road project. That project was su supposed to have been completed in 36 months. It was commissioned, or it was the president cut the sword in October 2020. Beyond a that, couple of I, months I, before the election. I, I think. We're in March 2022. I think, Nothing has happened on that project. Don't you? A few and quanta hospital Rock project, it. we took money. Mm -hmm. Nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. We've just taken money to do the 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 Pedwasi to to Kofoudua Noda Road. We've just taken another plenty money in excess of 400, 400 million dollars 
to do the echi to get a pa bridge over that from. Is that not why? Is that not why? So, so you say that you feel the finance minister should yes should because be sacked because he's, or maybe he's he done a lot right. of borrowings. Yeah. The monies have not been applied to the projects for uh, which uh, we uh, you're quick. You're quick. Yeah. Thirty seconds. A finance I beg minister. Of Let's a finance very minister very quick. will stop collection of all the one, one key quick thing. Reaction. One key thing. It isn't necessarily how much you borrow. But what you do with it? Thank you. And and what and, have you and, done with it? And what I think the firm McCall should should look at is that there's been projects upon projects. But, but, but if you go, I have to, mentioned if you go to what you do with it, have, tell yeah. me the the close to two hundred billion or so that has been borrowed. No, the, the, the most what, the most what, recent what, borrowing. What, what, which, what has your administration well done with all that? Hasn't money? even arrived. I mean, uh, literally. You know, do you, but know, you borrowed. Do you know one of the things? Hold, 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 hold it. So hold how borrowed. can you show hold from that? Do you know one of the things that, yeah. as, as a media person, mm -hmm. when I go out there, people talk about the fact that this administration, even if the borrowing, we had seen so much, I mean, something commensurable, we wouldn't feel paid. But we don't see it. That is what some people say. I'm just reflecting what people I'm, I'm say. Listening. I'm so listening. I want you to answer those Ghanaians that okay. with the excess of 200 billion, what has your administration done with it? In, in all fairness, um, the most painful thing is improvement of human capital. It is difficult to assess. It is, it is difficult to feel. Mm. It is difficult to uh, really account to your wife that uh, all the monies you've been making, you've been paying school fees for your children. And your wife wonders where all that money went. It, it's quite difficult. And I really think that until we come to terms with the fact that, listen, improvements in our human capital has been one of the you know, front burner issues for the president. In the, and, and we all know. How, how have you achieved that? Oh, well, I mean... Mention, and I don't want you to go into too much detail because we don't have too much time. The budget for education and... I want, yeah. you, I want you to mention the, specifics. The budget for their education was 20 million. We doubled it to 40 million. And then when you go to the likes of Abomosu... Billion or million. When you go to the likes of Abomosu, the STEM school uh, that, that's been built is, is, is just quadruple or even, if I should say... Uh, more than quadruple the size of the E blocks. What is the STEM and, school? Oh, my sir. This is a science tech yes. program. Yes. But, but the, and these are projects we are rolling No, no, and, so and, you, and if you should let, see let's the talk, Let's talk about... No, I'm saying, so I've seen, I have yeah, seen plans yeah, and all of that. Yeah. But let's, talk about, plans. Let's, let's talk about... Let's talk about... They are underground let's talk about working. About you don't like E like blocks, but you, but you want... You know, already you already know have. we've built... We've actually continued about 30... Of the e -blocks, out of the and most of them are out of the 200 during your tenure yes how many did you do before leaving? we finished 49 and and if we've come and added over 30 haven't we done at, well that's where oh do you do you need a list yes i do we so you feel this. basically you feel Education that with these right free the shs and maybe the other components justify what we have spent in when we, when supposedly look, building our social capital i cry when i drive on my roads but then what gives me solace is that, listen, right. some child has had the opportunity to get education right. and will be to the benefit of the nation 10 years down the line. And, and, and we've had to sacrifice bad roads for good education. And, and that has been the scenario. But it is a developmental agenda and we should support it and embrace it. Nothing can replace good education. Mm. Education is expensive. As they say, if you like, try ignorance. Ignorance is quadruple... So, uh, so, uh, so, another, uh, another, uh, let me rebut, another, let no, me no, rebut. We, we can't no, have let me rebut what back and said. forth rebuttal the free on, 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 on for the SHS for the past five years. The, the, the amount of money they've spent on free SHS is just about 10 billion, right? Let's, let's, 10 billion. Yeah, that is 10 fine. Billion. That is fine. So, let's, did you, did let's, you take, talk let's, about the infrastructure? let's take, let's take infrastructure, gentlemen. Oh, how many let's have take, you built? It is, it, it is all right. I mean, this is a conversation. Yes, yeah, no, 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 Especially ahead of 2024. But staying with school. Education sector is staying, staying on the bed of school. Just one uh, thing. Yes. Roxanne, yes. staying on I the bed of school. school. Yes. I beg you. We've been told by and the I, caretaker minister for yeah. gender, you know, social yeah. protection and all of that, that if you're thinking of the school feeding program, you uh -huh. may have to hold on for a while because there are certain conditions and we know of all these. Expanding it is not going to be something that we're going to see boom yeah. happening. You know. and, and it takes me back. School feeding for award-winning program globally recognized to where we are currently it's all about money again i'll put it to you yeah. don't you feel then that your end in parliament is shooting us all in the foot and that maybe we need the e-levy to push some of these uh, programs 
Akapo, how does e levy affect school feeding? When gov when you ask you, government, you need, oh no you no, need, oh, you need some Dr. Kisi. A... No, do, oh. do, Dr. Kisi. But I was me, hoping. No, Dr. Kisi. I was hoping for Dr. one Kisi, thing. You are you are. Can I can I clarify one time? Thing. Just are, one thing. You are quitting my time away. Just one thing. Akapo, you have a minute. I'll yes, give you a minute. They, they ask government, what do you intend to apply the e levy to? They say cyber security. They say cyber security. Technological one, improvement. Oh, please. Infrastructure. You said cyber I'm giving you to a minute. You said cyber security. So mm. You start one billion. When we interrogated the figure, is less than 400 million is going to you start. They say road, road contractors. When we interrogate the figure, it's only one billion. We ask government, the rest, what will you apply to? So where, where, where do we get money for the school feeding program? Where should we get money? It's because it's budgeted for from tax collected. Mm. It's, it, so and the you, e -levy, and you know about the fluctuation when it comes to no the e levy the e levy is not going to be applied to 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 um, how do you call it to school feeding school feeding is not funded from the, the e levy let, let's, they let's, themselves let's, are saying so I am not before, saying before you, before you come before they you said they will apply e levy to, to so, so, to so your minute is actually up but before yes. you come in Dr. he went uh, that way about ten seconds I I want us to actually see and listen to what. Uh, the caretaker minister had to say on the subject. So, Speaker, currently the expansion of the program is on hold. We are clearing all areas of caterers and putting in place measures to ensure effective and efficient service delivery to all beneficiary schools as well as the caterers. We are also putting in place a management information system to enhance efficiency and effectiveness of the system. We shall surely inform this, this August House when we are ready to expand the program to cover additional schools. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All right, so that was the caretaker minister, Cecilia Abnadapa. When are you going to be ready to bring in other schools? Because uh, when we are ready, when can be a very long pipeline? When? I mean, there's one key thing, and, and I just want to be just as crystal clear. Government can only do so much in two ways, either through taxes or loans. Mm. And, and if we won't do the taxes, we have to borrow. If we won't borrow, then we have to do the... Suleiman Abraima, Media Foundation for West Africa, yeah. says you guys are just playing are a game because... Oh, oh, hold it. You are just playing a game because whether you do e-levy or whatever, you will still go to the IMF. That's what he thinks. You know, there's one... Of course, Robert Fama, or Beko IMF. We may... I mean, listen, we're not isolated from the rest of the world. Mm. Uh, going for some support from IMF and depending on IMF is a whole different thing. Mm. Uh, uh, and, and, and from a financial standpoint, when you're looking for avenues to support programs and projects, you always don't close your doors to everybody. Wherever there's a flow, you go and, and, and grab it. But you've been and, going to the IMF and, 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 No, that's what I'm saying, that... Yes. We're taking dependent, COVID relief funds. Depending heavily on them... Is, and under declaring them. And then also, <laughs> the, the key thing, and, and let me say this, IMF is not the solution we want. We want self-reliance. And that is what Ghana should be going for. Speaking of that self-reliance, and this is the final bit I want you gentlemen to look at. Um, there are so many dynamics, it's, it's hydra-headed, but let me try and box them together. We've even heard uh, the CEO of the Kufour Foundation say that uh, we need certain thinking minds when it comes to Ghana Beyond Aid, because I don't know whether that is a suggestion that we don't have the minds right now. But uh, Professor Atukuba, Raymond Atukuba, mm -hmm. when you look at all these developments we've had, he says no one wants military intervention in Ghana. Absolutely. Nobody wants Absolutely. It. But then he says, but looking at our economic turmoil, you are putting in place the ingredients that spark these things. Unfortunately for us, we have happenings in sister countries, neighboring countries, some of them right bordering our country like Burkina Faso. And that if you don't do the right things, with Ghana desperately broke, we could end up there. Some members from your party, yeah. KT Hammond and others, just today I was reading what Kojo Pongkroma said that you can have divergent views, but don't try to trample on our democracy. Do you feel, do you feel it is not justified? Look, I have a message from 
Musa Abatua, who says, God bless Professor Raymond Atuguba. He has spoken on behalf of Ghanaians. The government has no reason to get us into this economic quagmire. What have they done with the $11 billion bonds raised within the space of four years? It goes on and on. Listen. Is it not justified? No. Listen, uh, there's been great depression in many countries. The Brits have had it. They didn't go on, on a coup d'etat. And that was even worse than what we're going through now. And let's be very frank with ourselves. Uh, the Americans in the 1909s and things with the Great Depression, they didn't, they didn't take up arms. 1909? You know, Great Depression, I mean, yeah, they didn't take up arms. The United States. You're yes, comparing us to No, no, what I'm saying depression. is that they were in more dire Is our, is our economy in a depression? That's what I'm saying. It. That's why I'm saying that even with them, <laughs> in those scenarios where they had money, they didn't, ha they didn't have food to buy, they didn't go on a coup d'etat. And that is what we are trying to say, that listen, it is not an alternative. Let's not bring it in the discuss. It is not. We've been there before. And we know from history that it did not do as well. Mm -hmm. What we rather need is to arm ourselves with more ideas, more businesses to fight it. That is what I want to hear. I want to have more entrepreneurs going crazy about Ghana and all of us mm. helping making Ghana a more sound place to do business. And, and that is what I want to hear from my other people, not this alternative, which we all know. When the, when the, when well, the guns so was, are on so, the street... So, so was Prof wrong? He is very wrong. Okay. He, he should change his lingua. All right. Absolutely. Um, your, Prof your quick take it. on that as, yes, as we my quick wrap the conversation. Is that when Captain Budu Kumsin retired in 2016, retired in 2016, said um, the way the economy was going, the way... Um, and, and, and that, that just reminds me to chip yeah. in. Ab Abdul Malik Kubako has mentioned. I mean, we've had this rhetoric. It's not the first time. Yes. 2001, 2004, yes. You know, 2008, people 2013. Around the, all these yeah. times, we've had people yeah. talk about people these caution. things. People caution. It didn't... I people mean, caution. When he said so, nobody decried it. People, people, men in government took it in their stride and took precaution. A month ago, my own leader in government, the Honorable Adnan Dombre, he cautioned, he said by our conduct, if we are not careful, we're inviting the military to intervene and that we should be careful. That is our conduct. Yes. Okay. Ah, but what did Raymond say wrong? Markedly different. What did he say? Mm. He said if we are not careful. Mm. So, so you're drawing conduct. a nexus yes, between what another person said about the behavior of MPs and people saw it creating as this and, and this one as well. Yes, this one too is a caution. So I, I, I am I'm flabbergasted as to why even members of parliament will be calling for his head. I haven't called for his head. No, not you, but okay, some members of parliament. I've heard KT have. Yes, maybe we will be calling for his head, including ex military officers like my senior in Krabi Fadati. It's unfair. Okay. And, and, and look, if you listen to him, he even used anecdotes, his own personal experience to say that. Who is not justified under any circumstance? Mm. But we should be careful. And he was also throwing the caution to the military. They shouldn't be trigger happy. So for you, he did nothing wrong. No, gentlemen. And this was a I'd work like to say, exercise uh, in academia. Right. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, even as we talk about these issues, there's a lot more when we talk about our living standards because that also evinces what the ordinary Ghanaian is uh, going. Uh, through. And uh, we're going to share with you uh, those uh, bits as uh, well. But gentlemen, thank you so much for joining the conversation. Dr. Dr. Dixon, Adumaku Kizi, Member of Parliament for Anyasu Utum. And of course, and, uh, uh, and Roxanne Nelson, Dafi Amepo, Member of Parliament for South Dai. Yes. We take a break. Uh, when we return, we'll come uh, through <laughs> with more. Stay.